What is up guys, McDoubles back here with a brand new video and today we're going to be checking out the Night of the Eclipse. Yes my friends, it is a hybrid that focuses on astral magic that's going to be mostly nature obviously alongside arcane, focusing on balanced druid but with a melee twist. So I hope you guys enjoy, let's get into it. <laughs> My friends welcome today i know it's been a long time but uh, i hope that this video makes the wait worth it because today we are finally going to be making our rounds and getting to the night of the eclipse legendary random enchant guys this is really sick i've got it fully fleshed out and i've got a lot of cool stuff to show you guys we're going to be progressing into aq temple we're going to be taking on cthune uh in an interesting way and uh hopefully beyond right whatever that means going beyond we'll see what happens but i want to start off before we jump into some real content by telling you what the night of eclipse legendary enchant does the enchant that everything is going to be based around give you a quick rundown on the abilities i'm using i do just want to preface everything by saying if you go to the hero architect and you look at this one right here by critical miss you're going to be getting a very very solid build mine is only within a couple talent points of his uh but it is basically his idea it's a really good place to start and he explains it really nicely so that is something i genuinely recommend that you do but we're going to see what we can do with the build in this video how many changes we can make along the way to try to make it more of our build and uh yeah i mean obviously it's what we tend to do so, Night of the Eclipse. This is a long one, so bear with me, but it's a combination of Rogue and Balanced Druid, so that's already pretty sick. Night of the Eclipse says, Sinister Strike is transformed into Eclipse Strike, which deals astral damage, scales with spell power, and reduces the cast time of Wrath or Starfire by 50%, stacking up to two times, so you can get an instant cast off. Additionally, the spell can trigger your next available Eclipse phase. Eclipse Strike also empowers your next Starfire during Lunar Eclipse, or it's going to actually empower your next wrath during solar eclipse increasing their damage by up to 120 percent and 24 percent of my attack power so that's where the hybrid uh, part of the build comes in now on top of that eviscerate is transformed into solar strike this is something i really like about this build because we're already transforming abilities into things that normally would never exist in wow and that's my favorite kind of legendary enchant solar strike does astral damage which i will just say once again is a combination between nature and uh, arcane damage it has a 20 percent chance per combo point to apply solar burn so you're going to use it on five combo points and you apply a dot it does astral damage and scales with moonfire starfall also is transformed into nightfall while nightfall is active solar strike triggers 0.6 seconds of a starfall per combo point spent so you're always going to be doing it on five right and this starfall effect strikes enemies within eight yards of you and deals they say signy there so that's a weird one but basically it deals good damage i'll say now i was a little underwhelmed by the nightfall at first you can see it right here it is actually a buff that you just put on and you cannot use starfall anymore but it turns out that when you use it on five combo points and you build right it's actually not that bad it's pretty solid passive cleave but this build doesn't really have any on-demand aoe so that's really something to keep in mind as well this is more of a raiding build and so that's exactly what we're gonna do now in terms of my abilities i'm going uh pretty normal right off the bat going with a demon by the way uh because we are sweaty so we named him sweaty boy and based on what critical miss said we go with the demon so that we can reduce the resistance of our target by 58 it's just a little bit extra on top of the curse of the elements the strength totem we have have our sinister strike eclipse strike we have our solar strike the moon fire the wrath of course the star fire i've got my normal utility we have the demon jump we have the leap of faith because i really like it you can pull the demon as you can see as well all of the different buffs you can humanly imagine at this point and we've got the charge and the feign death which is really really sick but it's pretty much exactly what you would expect at that point i'll go over talents more as we make our own changes uh essentially though it is what you saw from what i pointed out in the hero architect so uh let's get into some some content see what we can accomplish how much progression we can make and uh, exactly how high we can raise this item level guys i'm doing a quick normal uh aq temple run right and i just got a hammer of jizz yes dude the hammer of jizz man this is gonna be great because we're gonna use it for probably like a lava lash build uh i'm thinking about going back to that 2h build we made a video on like a week or two ago i know it's really strong uh, i don't know if you have any recommendations for a build that can utilize the hammer of jizz 30 spell power strength int stamina 2h mace 78 item level let me know in the comment section below so sometimes the best part about a boss fight when you're testing a build for the first time is knowing that you're not playing 
making it perfect yet and still doing pretty decent so i'm in this aq as you guys know and i just got top four which i'll definitely take 3.4k on uh this guy uh lord Cree. you know temple aq is not something i do often it's uh in fact i don't even remember ever doing this which is kind of fascinating when you really think about it Ooh, maybe we can win that ring that'd be pretty good what do we got down here bindings i'm gonna go for that for sure yeah so it's just one of those things where it's like okay 3.4k dps when I know that I'm brand new to this and I've got a lot of room to improve, that's a really good sign. You know, the AoE is not great with this build, but we've kind of run out of the AoE powerhouses at this point. And with that being said, raiding seems to be the way to go. I, I don't feel like it was always like that, but to be honest, it probably was. I just always glorify Mythic Plus, if I'm completely honest with you. I just really enjoy the whole Mythic Plus system. Oh, no! Doesn't even make sense, dude. Okay, checkpoint. But yeah, raiding is definitely the way to get gear right now. So if you're playing on Ascension, I highly recommend recommend you join any of the pug groups the fact of the matter is wow is never really that hard on ascension people are pugging ascended raids they're pugging plus 30 mythic uh dungeons right and so you know you can get in there with random people and nowadays you can basically do whatever you want to do that to me is really really fun because i do believe even on ascension once upon a time you were gate kept you could not raid unless you joined a guild and uh, if you weren't that kind of person if you didn't like to be in disc calls or you didn't want to have to log on at like nine o'clock every single day or whatever the time is for that specific guild uh that would be a pretty big turnoff but now you just look in world chat there's almost always something going on and you just go for it dude it's actually pretty sick so that is the focus of this video at least in many ways we're gonna be trying night of the eclipse but we're gonna be raiding probably this entire time trying to go for the higher item level stuff because that's the only stuff we haven't acquired yet we've got an item level at the moment of 71 which i'm definitely pre <laughs> oh man it's just sad but funny uh do I res them? I don't even have a res. Ugh. I would want somebody to do it for me. Oh, somebody's already getting them. Okay, well, I learned redemption for nothing then. But anyway, as I was trying to say, because of League 3's short duration, we're finally able to get into some of this stuff, like the AQ Temple runs and future next Ramus, uh, because they're just less gate kept and um, just easy to get into because of this pug style that we've got on the server right now. I'm pretty impressed by it. I'm still waiting for changes. One of the reasons I took so long to put out a new video is because... I know I was wrong, obviously, in hindsight, but I kind of thought they were going to come out with some changes sometime soon. They did a few minor things here and there, but not really anything that affects probably any of you and me as well. So, you know, it wasn't anything massive. I'm really still waiting for those PvP high-risk changes, but I have a feeling that they might be saving anything big for the end of the league, because that makes logical sense. They'll say, hey... League 3 is over, we're merging into TBC, and you can come play with all these brand new things that we've just decided to put into the game. I mean, it makes sense, right, guys? So, I would expect probably three weeks to a month from now is when we'll see some really big changes. I know it's not anything any of us that play want to hear, but that's probably the case. I'd like to be wrong, and I'll fully be happy about it if that's the case. But that's what I would probably expect. Looks like we've got Battle Guard Sartura. Somebody just pulled her. All right, let's just see how we do. So again, there's no logical way that I'm possibly playing this perfect right now. At the current moment, I've basically gone into this 100% blind. Um, this is actually starting off as a build that a friend of mine advised me to play but it revolves around just managing these eclipse stages that you otherwise would have never touched unless you play boomkin moonkin balance Druid, for example which a lot of people haven't tried so uh yeah i mean you might not be used to this but you can see a 14k i think i could do a heck of a lot higher than that and that's kind of the point um i need to get to a point where i've perfectly managed my eclipse stages so that i can get way way bigger crates and that's going to be the goal as well i want to see exactly how high i can pull my single target dps up to uh, by the end of this video because i've been told that night of the eclipse well once again it does wane in the aoe dps department is basically one of the best builds for single target not the best i think but uh, definitely one of the best. 14k crits, like that's basically where I am. I've gotten way bigger crits though, so I think after this raid we'll have to try to figure things out. Wh what am I doing wrong is what I'm going for, right? Okay, um, top four again, 4k DPS single target. I think people want for Ascended uh, AQ Temple, right? I think people want 6k, which a lot of you guys, especially if you're like new or casual, you're looking at 6k single target and you're like, what the hell, dude? It's like, yeah, I get it. Trust me. Uh, so that's going to be pretty much something we need to go for. Most of those dudes have like 75 item level though, so I don't have to feel too bad right now. Once again, I can say my item level is a big inhibiting factor right now. So that's a good thing, by the way. It's not just for the excuse. It's so I can say to myself, bro, 
you have a lot of wiggle room. You have a lot of stuff that you can get. I mean, nobody wants there to be no gear for you to get because you've collected everything. Silithid Claw. That's a cool one. Don't think I need that, though. I get nothing from that boss, man. There was nothing. We have these caches, though, which are actually super exciting on the more difficult stuff. Ooh, okay. Boots of the Prophecy. Strength, Stamina, Intellect, 78 Item Level, 30 Spell Power. Man, it's like, is that better than Judgment Sabatons? It's less Strength, less Hit Rating, which I don't think I can give up right now because I'm actually only 0.75% above the hit cap uh, and I think if I take these boots off let's just try it so I know I'm right well I can't but I'm pretty sure that I go too far below and I know you might think but it's only gonna be like 0.4% why do you care trust me every time I miss I'm gonna really hate myself so <laughs> I, I can't is this normally how people do this by the way because for some reason I don't quite recall this but like a lot of us are straggling maybe they'll just summon us to the next boss right because we're just running past everything I'll keep these boots though you never know they might actually end up being better and uh, they do interestingly enough seem to play into that same hammer of jizz theme which uh, is pretty exciting. I don't mind going back to builds we've already done videos on if I can do something wildly different with it, like pulling way more DPS with a much better set of gear. And that seems like uh, we might be pulling in that direction. Okay, we just killed Princess Huhuran, which I only remember as a Hearthstone card, actually, for Hunter. And we did the same thing, basically. Top three this time, 4.3k just about. Yeah, I'm pretty pretty much happy with that. I also picked up a barbed choker, so that's going to replace my Ember Fury talisman. And we got Hardened Courage Chitin, which is a 2.5 tier leg slot item in the making. So we'll see if we get anything good from this. I don't need to need on that again because we just talked about that we already have it. Leg slots, okay. Spell power, no thank you. Spell power, no thank you. Is that a bow? Agi bow. Okay, nope. Nothing from that guy. And then commendations here. The good thing, though, is that we might be able to buy better loot with our commendations after completing this, because this will be my first time on League 3 doing AQT, which is pretty sick. I won't lie, it feels really good being in first place on random trash pulls if it's single target at 4.7k. It feels so good. Blue Karaji resonating crystal, by the way. Will we win? I never win these, so I really don't think so. But you never know. Could happen would be really, really awesome to get one on League 3, because when we transfer over to the uh, old server, we'll still have it. Still in first, I literally can't believe it, to be honest. When I first started playing this, it wasn't too great, and I'm starting to get the hang of it, and it's really starting to become apparent to me, like, the true power level of this build. We're not quite this dude who just went skyrocketing to 8k DPS with a blade flurry, but hey, we're pretty close. What?! Dude, yes! Don't you love when things work out for no reason? Why do I deserve this? I don't, but I got it. Blue Karaji Resonating Crystal. So I go for the green one. I think we just don't be greedy. Because I, if it was a different raid, I will go for it in the future. But these people want to get this mount too. Guys, well, that is just sicko mode, dude. What a big, big win. I gotta be honest, uh, yeah, like I said, took a big break, actually. Red one dropped, too. Took a big break from Ascension and World of Warcraft for, like, I say big break. Five days, is that really a big break? But I took it, and, uh, I gotta say, coming on back, already starting to get super lucky, get sick gear, doing AQT for the first time on League 3, picking up a Karaji Resonating Crystal, which I'll go ahead and use as well. Yeah, it really is a really nice, uh, almost like a welcoming party. I'll definitely take it. All right, let's check it out, bro. Oh my god, it feels good. We are so much better than everyone else who doesn't have this. Nice. Okay, it's possible I'm a donkey. I died. <laughs> like the phase one, dude. Uh, I haven't done Cthune in literally years. Holy crap. Uh, top four before I died, though. And, of course, the DPS dropped as the fight continued. So, I was more like three, maybe 3.2, kind of like this guy right here. Before it all went to hell. And now I'm just going to continue to slip into nothingness. But, hey, uh, we've gotten no other loot since then. That's why I haven't really shown any of the other boss fights. But, maybe we'll get something off Cthune. Uh, at the very bare minimum, though, after this, we'll reassess everything. See if we can improve the build some more. Re-enchant the brand new gear we got, but... 
both at least the leg slot item here and the necklace and uh, yeah, see where we can go from there. I'm really enjoying Night of the Eclipse so far, I really can't lie, and uh, I didn't think I was going to like it, so this is a really big surprise. Okay, and that's that. Sadly, no loot because we just lost the roll for the eye, lost the roll for a couple other things. We have a cash right here, it's just some commendation, so where are we at right now? We're looking at 525 Mythic Coins, only 131 Raiders commendations. It's not too bad, maybe we can get something with that. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely take it though. So right now I'm in Heroic BWL. And uh, we're finishing up this boss where I basically come in the top five. I was top four, but, you know, I forgot about Flame Gore. Let's uh, finish this guy real quick. Basically, what I realized is that by using Critical Misses, the uh, guy I told you about earlier in the video who basically showed me the concept of this version of the build, I'm using his weak auras, and you can see it right here, and you'll see it a little bit more as we continue. This weak aura string, I'll put it in my Discord somehow. It's going to be in the Ascension WoW builds for this particular build. Uh, there'll be a link or something to it. It's a pretty good one. Uh, it basically puts everything you need to see for all of your Eclipse stages on, for me at least, on the left-hand side. I made it a little bit bigger, and uh, yeah, that works pretty freaking well. It makes it incredibly easy to know when you're supposed to be using all of the different spells that you need to use. I never have to look to the top right. The weak auras I had made for it were very shoddy, very, you you know, hastily made, I'll just say. And so they weren't as good. So I'm very happy. Thank you once again to that guy. You gotta love when somebody creates really well done weak RS, you know? I'll take top five though. It was 5.2k, says 4.7 at the end there, but regardless, I'll take. 5k let's round it right single target dps there was another guy he destroyed me on another boss but on this one i beat him by about almost 1k dps who's playing the same build of course that's why i'm comparing myself to him uh let's see that's me nobody else is playing my build i think though dude this guy's in first place dps with frost brand attack and flame tongue attack as his first two this is with the tornado wind strike build what the heck that's crazy okay so you can see the weak auras and you can see it's counting down my eclipse when this is glowing, that's when I'm going to get the most damage out of um, either my Wrath or my Starfire. So this makes it so freaking easy to play this build. Right as it goes away, you want to get off your Wrath or your Starfire, depending on which Eclipse phase you're going towards. And then you immediately go into your Eclipse phase so that you don't even have to worry about building up the uh, double Sinister Strike basically to go into it. Essentially, it lets you start your build a little bit faster, start your rotation rather, a little bit faster. Super, super useful. I'll show you guys it again. So we're at 9, 8, 7. You can see I'm currently spamming Wraths. So I want to get off 1, 2 before it goes away. Okay, and now as it goes away, boom, and you can see I'm in the next phase. And this is super good. I did mess up my dots and stuff while explaining that, but that is exactly what I want to do. 24k crit. That's what I wanted to see. I've been looking for those big crits. I knew they were possible. Because uh, as I was playing the build in a very weird fashion, I realized that I could potentially hit incredibly hard, but I couldn't replicate it until now. So there you go. That is really sick. All right, we're on the wrath phase now. I am just sitting on this boss. Who cares about mechanics? Okay, so I want to get the wrath off here. We're in the next eclipse phase. It's literally going perfect. Starfire. Oh my god, 71k crit. I love this part of the boss. Okay. I'm actually going to be really... Oh, 76? Greedy. There we go. We did it. Boom. Into the next phase. Nope, don't want to open the quest log. Oh, don't die. Come on. Heal me. Heal me. Oh, come on. Oh, the healers are pog. Oh, no, we messed up. We actually messed up. You could see, because I messed up, I had to get off a Starfire that didn't give me extra damage. But uh, we just barely made it. The boss died and we died right before him. Second place DPS there with almost 8k single target. I mean, that's freaking sick. God, I love this build. We're getting the hang of it. But let me tell you, this is one of those builds like a lot of the new Ascension ones where you just got to have the weak auras. When I tried to play this with my crappier versions, actually, it was not all the clips you saw before, but even worse before that. It just was so much more difficult to play. But with a weak aura, you can just completely change everything. It's crazy how something so simple can completely change the difficulty of a build. Okay, there was nothing off that boss for me. I, I guess I could go for this uh, crossbow, actually. So I'll need on that. 
I don't know if I'll win though. How freaking amazing would it be to have a full set of either Judgment or I saw another one. I think it was called Avenger. God, that comes from AQ Temple, I think. And when I saw some dude in that, I was like, that exists? That's how little of AQ and Nax content I've ever played. I literally never go this far with the AQ content. All right, and there we go. That is Nefarian. This is scuffed because it's including, you can see from these guys, it's including all the dudes we killed over there, which was basically not my department as a basically single target guy. Uh, let me quickly go through this stuff. We'll go for the, I already have the tunic actually. I don't need that. Pass, pass, pass. Don't need any of this stuff. Yeah, I don't need it. Literally any of that. Okay. Do we get anything from the caches? Strength, chest plate of wrath. I'll keep that for something in the future. And uh, okay, commendations. Wow, that was a super fast heroic BWL. Guys, that must have been like 25 minutes. Seriously, uh, I, maybe I'm embellishing that, but not on purpose. I, it just feels super quick. That's what I'm getting at. Let's go uh, use some of these items, turn them in in Orgrimmar, and see uh, after we enchant them all how big of an item level increase Let's we get from it. Let's quickly grab the legs from the 2.5 tier. This is gorgeous. Item level 78. It's already great. Okay, it has everything I think I want. And it has set bonuses that are super cool. Melee critical strike rating increased by 12% of my intellect, but spell crit increased by 8% of my strength. So strength-based hybrid gear. And damaging melee abilities have a chance to do an additional 30% of my spell power as holy damage. Super sick. Gonna grab that. And also the heroic, right? Yeah. Okay. Heroic chromatic girdle. That's gonna be for my judgment belt. So there we go. All right. There we go. Everything is on. Uh, we're gonna have to fix that expertise problem. Problem, but here's the thing guys 72 item level a whole item level increase and that's not a joke I know it only is plus one but that plus one matters because we're talking decimal increases on the flip side Okay, with that being said, I will just say my mystic and chance don't make me angry. Okay, this is 21% of my attack power going towards Wrath and Starfire. Super hybridy. Three weapon expertise, 412 expertise. More energy regen, looking at 18% with vitality. And what? Just one, okay. Improved SS. Two reduced energy costs on the SS. One balance of power for hit. Demonic mind for the crit. Mental quickness. Once again, we know what that's about. And then tides of battle, which is just an SS modifier that, uh, just, well, just look at it like it makes your SS better, okay? Knight of the Eclipse is really, really unique because it's the one hybrid build that just never would have made sense otherwise. They had to design something around it. Even back in my heyday when I felt like I was making hybrids out of nothing, I couldn't have made this really work because if you were going to go with, like, let's say, Moonfire, you probably were going to go Arcane Mage and do an Arcane Hybrid like that. But when are you going to Starfire? You know, when are you going to Wrath outside of using a bow and arrow? Uh, yeah, you just weren't. So yeah, it's pretty cool. So that Onyxia was actually a major wash. I don't know how this is possible, but the Raid Leader left it on free-for-all loot, forgot, and then a bunch of random people just looted everything. <laughs> This isn't a freaking joke. Look, <laughs> just, just, it was a for literal free for all. And no, of course they didn't expect that anybody was going to roll anything off. So we lost all the loot. I'm glad I died on that one on the first Fire Nova. Okay, that's a plus 11, two chested, uh, almost first place, basically first place DPS at the end of the boss, but the bees are going to kill me there, and it was about 5.8k. I will take that for single target. Yeah, I just wanted to do something different, just throw a mythic plus out there, um, see how the single target DPS is. I was actually pleasantly surprised there. Do we get something good? Precedent says no, but you never know. Okay, uh, strength and I get a dagger. All right, ascension, I see what it's like. Okay, bash scooter, no. And uh, this one, guys, three strength chests and I get three weapons and two of them are daggers? Oh my God. 
Okay, I, I don't even know why I can even pretend like I expected otherwise. So here's what I can say. The build's AoE is really not as bad as I initially thought. You can see some clips right here where on cleave pulls, on AoE pulls in general, I can still do 5, almost 6k DPS pretty consistently. Uh, the Night of the Eclipse feels underwhelming and it does take some practice to get used to it, but it isn't actually that bad. So I don't want to put it out there that, you know, this is so good for single target, but you're going to go out there and pull 2k AoE. That's not true. You can still pull competitive AoE DPS, I would say. Uh, especially when you consider the fact that as soon as you get to that single target encounter, you're going to be on top of the meters. But one thing I want to go ahead and do now is actually try the build in PvP. I'm super curious. So I've retrofitted the build to be a little bit better for PvP with the Death Coil and the Divine Protection and maybe even the Redirect. We shall see. And I have a Greater Heal spell as well. I'm going to go ahead and get everything ready for that. I'm picking up a brand new enchant as well called a Natural Order, which we could have been using for the PvE build as well. And that would been a big dps increase so make sure to put your hands on that and uh yeah we will see how it goes and by the way the natural order says dealing non-periodic damage with nature spells and abilities increases your arcane damage by two percent up to ten percent because it stacks five times and since we do astral damage it plays itself so that's extremely good so i've got my old set of pvp gear on right now they did release the uh really op pvp gear so that's something you can go for but every uh piece is like fifty thousand on or minimum so it takes a bit to grind that out Oh, guys, one thing I just found out, Fellforge mode is coming out today, the day this video is going live, apparently. A random dude was talking about it in world chat. I pressed him on it. He said that they actually put it up on their Discord. I found it, and yeah, it is actually coming out today, 1800 server time. That's pretty sick. I'm definitely going to be doing some Fellforge PvP videos, so that's really awesome. But let's go ahead and queue for some arena and see how this build does in uh, PvP. I'm actually really, really curious, so uh, yeah, let's see. 1v1s. me or is this build really good against casters uh that's two scorch builds and one frostbolt build really beat bad considering the fact that i could really optimize this more with things like kidney the first match i didn't even have the hamstring but that's definitely a good pickup as well i mean there's a lot of optimization to be had possibly even with the talents for pvp we still go three wins uh right off the bat at least so that's pretty sick all against casters though i want to see if we can fight anybody else so let's just jump back into the arena and see what happens It's 
not true I wanna put up all my walls cause I'm not in the mood But then I cut myself off from the rest of the room I know that God can heal it all if you're patient and soon It can all be worth it, all the searching Pain is never really permanent, but damn it hurts, man I could feel all of the turbulence and it's concerning I've been searching for a purpose, I hope it's worth it This society is really trying me Okay, what can I say about the Night of the Eclipse? First of all, it surprised me, and I really do mean that. This is actually Sleeper in my mind, because I really was not excited about it. That's why I put it off so long. I knew it was going to be good single target, but I'm addicted to just the dopamine rush that comes from the big numbers and the AoE, which it still had. Interestingly enough, we actually got massive upgrades in this video, guys. My PvE set is almost 73 item level, which is huge. It's like 1.5 higher than what we started with, which is like four or five brand new pieces of gear. I picked up some different PvP stuff just to, uh, you know, just get like an actual PvP set. I keep changing things around so much. You can see I even blood forged a lot of the stuff that we acquired in previous videos for PvE, but I did go ahead and pick up, you know, the champion's blades, right? Just threw some crap crusaders on it, you know, just something simple like that. I will say, Summon Demon, this dude is MVP. This is, it has to be one of the better demons, right? I know Banshee's good. I know there was a zombie in, like, Eastern Plaguelands that's pretty good, a zombie troll. But this guy has to be good as well, because he doesn't just have Fell Strike, which is reducing resistances for PvE. He also has a Cripple, which was an extra slow and enemy attack reduction in PvP, and War Stomp for an extra stun. Two seconds is only one less than Hammer of Justice. That's not a joke, dude. I've really enjoyed this build. I think it's one of the better ones. I think you guys should give it a try. I want to say, I did actually realize something when looking over their Discord uh, for the uh, brand new Fell Forged event that's going to be going on later today, which I really want to see you guys on because it's going to be PvP in the old school way, making new builds. And I didn't notice this at first. I thought it was going to be free pick and I was a little concerned. But look at this. Fell Forged will be opened up on Malganis to try out the foundational rework for draft mode, which I think we all understand at this point that randomness in this regard is at least more fun to watch. It can be more fun to play if it's done right as well. I like to harp back on old school season three Project Ascension when I used to think like, do I just pick SS? I remember when I used to tell people, Sinister Strike is the most broken brain dead way to play. That was the build, guys. It was just Sinister Strike and a two-handed weapon, to be fair. Imagine the difference in Ascension WoW. When once upon a time, I used to harp on people for just picking Sinister Strike and a two-handed weapon with maybe Wind Fury if you were lucky at 30, um, as opposed to today, where you have to have like 50 different things to set up your build. It's just a crazy time. I want to see what they do with uh, draft mode tonight, so uh, I hope to see you guys on there. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and a subscribe. At least like for the Fell Forge announcement, guys. I'll see you in the next one, though. Like I said, hope you enjoy. McDoubles out.